Welcome everyone to the ETE conference. As a land-grant institution, Utah State University campuses and centers reside and operate on the territories of the eight tribes of Utah who have been living, working, and residing on this land from time immemorial. These tribes are the Confederated Tribes of the Goshu Indians, Navajo Nation, Ute Indian Tribe, Northwestern Band of Shoshone, Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, San Juan Southern Paiute, Skull Valley Band of the Goshute, and White Mesa Band of the Ute Mountain Ute. We acknowledge these lands carry the stories of these nations and their struggles for survival and identity. We recognize elders past and present as peoples who have cared for and continue to care for the land. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous self-governance, history, experiences, and resiliency of the native people who are still here today. We are so happy to have you here. It's great to uh, meet together again on this Logan campus. Uh, I want to quickly thank our ETE uh, conference committee, specifically Shelley Arnold, Cree Taylor, Polly Conrad, Jess Lucero, and Mike Vicula, who have put in uh, hours and hours of preparation and planning. Uh, just quickly, I want to run through our uh, agenda and our program for the day. Uh, the full program you can access by scanning that QR code on the front. Um, after, after our keynote here uh, in the ballroom, we will start going to the breakout sessions uh, in the different classrooms. So there's, there's signage outside. Uh, we have breakouts in the ESLC and the WITSO, um, and also over in the LSB building. Uh, we will be coming back here to this building for lunch. You can pick up your lunch and either eat here in the ballroom, or if you'd like to eat outside or downstairs in the hub, those are all great options. Um, and then we will once again have some breakouts and we will return uh, again here to the Sunburst Lounge uh, for some networking and dessert uh, at the end of the day. I do also want to remind you, there are some sheets uh, on the tables, uh, but we have quite a few uh, pre-recorded asynchronous quad side sessions uh, that you can access. Uh, again, there's a QR code on that sheet, or you can access our conference webpage uh, to find those quad side sessions. Uh, and now uh, we're gonna hear uh, from our new ETE faculty committee chair, Cree Taylor. All right. Hello everybody, I'm Cree Taylor. I am a lecturer in the English department and I recently um, was the chair of the ETE conference committee and it's been a blast preparing this and it's just really nice to look at everybody. I was commenting to uh, Jessamyn, our keynote, it's like the thing I love about getting back together is seeing how tall everybody is. <laughs> they're not quite as tall as I think they would be or they're shorter than I thought they would be and it's really exciting <laughs> for me. So maybe I'm taller, I don't know. Maybe those of you that saw me didn't realize I was exploding with child under my face um, in that Zoom screen. But um, I'm happy to see everybody. We've worked really hard to plan this. Um, and one thing that we had talked about as a committee is that even though the conference was really successful in that online setting, we missed the sense of community, of just getting together and talking. Um, meeting each other, talking to each other. So I just want to encourage all of you to do that. Everyone has a name tag, so you can try your best to pronounce names or read. Some of you um, have my handwriting on your name tags. But you can read each other's names, you can get to know each other, figure out where people are from, um, and rebuild or rekindle that community that we have, right? Um, it's a great opportunity for you to do that. I'm just going to remark quickly on this year's theme. So this year's theme is Teaching Reimagined, Lessons Learned, Lessons Kept, and Lessons Coming. The subcommittee selected this theme. Why is this happening now? It always happened now. He was silent until this moment. Okay. Um, the subcommittee selected this theme because we were interested in hearing about how instructors had modified and adapted their curriculum and teaching practices during the chaos of the past two years. Lessons learned. What is something you learned about yourself, teaching, or students um, since I'm going to call it the before times? I'm not going to speak the wretched word. Um, lessons kept. What of those modifications, what modifications did you make during the last two years that you are continuing to use 
moving forward, even though we're not in that Zoom land um, as much as we were last year. Um, and then our uh, third portion, lessons coming. How do you see the lessons learned in the classroom during the past two years impacting your teaching moving forward? All of the breakout sessions speak to this theme in some way, and we are very particular and careful about that. Um, consider your own classroom and pedagogical practices as you participate today. And just a couple of questions for you to think about. What are your lessons learned, kept, and coming? How have you grown as an instructor during these difficult times, and how will your classroom be positively affected because of what you have learned? Um, I also want to thank the committee. Uh, it's been really fun working with them and meeting them, and I'm excited to see how tall each of them are today when I run into them. Um, and yes, we're just happy that we're here, happy to see all of you, um, and I hope that you enjoy the conference. Um, I'm going to turn the time over to our new provost, Larry Smith. Thanks, everybody. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my understanding is I'll take a couple of minutes and uh, welcome you to the ETE conference. Uh, this is the first time I've ever come to this event, and I'm just so impressed. This is incredible. Look at the attendance. And I love seeing so many of my statewide colleagues uh, from the past years uh, here. So uh, thank you very much for making that long drive uh, up to Logan. And uh, it's really great. Uh, uh, to see so many dedicated USU faculty uh, in this event. Um, over the course of the summer, there were some administrative changes that took place. And so uh, Robert Wagner, who was Vice President of Academic and Instructional Services, he and I did some swapping uh, of some units. So officially now, ETE reports to the Provost's Office uh, we thought that made sense given the incredible importance of ETE in helping USU faculty uh, get better and help you with career development and so forth. So Travis now reports to me, but uh, one of the first official things I did as provost was leave. I just left. I got the heck out of the office. Uh, I had some vacation planned and so forth. So I actually haven't had a chance to uh, meet with Travis yet, uh, and uh, uh, despite the fact he reports to me. So let's get the first report from Travis. Travis, how's ETE doing? Excellent. Okay, good. All right, thanks for the report. I'll see you next month. Uh, if any of you have any issues with ETE, please feel free to reach out to Paul Barr. <laughs> Not me. Um, uh, if you've if you just landed on the planet Earth, uh, uh, then, then uh, you'd know that, uh, otherwise you'd know that uh, last year Utah State University achieved the very prestigious Carnegie rank of a Research One University, a so-called R1 University. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Yeah. I believe that Utah State University would also very easily achieve the prestigious ranking of a T1 university, a teaching one university, except there's no such thing. Uh, but if there were, I'm sure USU would be a T1 institution because Utah State absolutely values teaching. We take it extremely seriously. Uh, I mean, what, what's the point of super smart people like you who know all this stuff, what's the point of not sharing it? You know, it, that's a beautiful thing. And, and that's, that's what teaching is about, is, is sharing your expertise and what you know, and then sharing it in a way that students get excited and it makes it easy for them to learn. Now, the importance of, of ETE is that throughout the year, they provide opportunities for USU faculty to learn better ways of sharing, of teaching, 
and then our students learn better, right? And so that makes you happy, it makes the students happy, and it makes USU happy, all right? I mean, that's a beautiful thing, okay? Uh, also, th the importance of these ETE events is that it's an opportunity for us to reflect on who we are as professionals, and we should always be doing that. Uh, you don't have to necessarily just do it at tenure and promotion time or annual review time. You should always be thinking every day about, how can I get a little bit better today? How can I be a little better professional? Uh, and so ETE is just one of the many service units to help you, the USU faculty, uh, improve. Uh, I know that uh, despite the fact I'm nearly 670 years old, uh, I'm constantly trying to uh, improve at least my golf swing. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, that's a very, very valuable process. Uh, again, I want to thank Travis and all of the ETE staff and all the associates of ETE uh, for putting on this incredibly important and valuable event and thank all of you for attending here today. And I'm sorry I won't be able to attend. I got to go back to the office and improve uh, this morning. So uh, again, have a terrific day and thank you very much for, for coming and participating in this. Thank you. Ready? Wait for it. <laughs> you wouldn't know that on all those Zoom calls, though. OK. So for you who don't know, my name's Shelly Arnold. I'm the instructional coordinator and part of ETE. And my job is to congratulate and hand out the certificates for the ETE 10 program this year. But before they do that, I want to take a moment and thank everybody who helps ETE all the time. We have two full-time faculty in ETE. That's it. And we have interns, which are amazing, and we have our amazing faculty and subcommittees, right? We also have academic media production that we use a lot, and we have city, and we have the library, and we have the learning specialists. ET does not do anything on its own, and we're supported by many units. So if we give a round of applause to those groups that really support us, I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, ET10 is our badging certification program we have here at the university. And what that is, is in ET, we focus on teaching. That's why you're here today, and that's why I'm here doing my job. Through that program, you collect badges, 10 specifically, to earn a certificate. So throughout the year, many instructors participate in our programming and submit for badges. They do things like engage in our learning circles and collaborate with people within there. They go to workshops and spark shops throughout the year. They then take those ideas that they get from ET and these professional development events and use them in their class. They implement them. They collect their results, they see if it worked, if it succeeded, and really what their students thought of it, or if they achieved the objectives that they had for that implementation. They also contribute back. So ET goes into our vast faculty, staff, student reservoir and asks them to present, write papers, give back to the teaching and learning community that we're trying to cultivate here at Utah State. And these instructors that I'm going to announce in just a second did just that. They earned those badges, applied for those certificates, and earned them over this last year. And I'm really happy and proud to be able to stand up here and present the certificates to everybody. So, ch -ch -ch. <laughs> my boss left for a second. <laughs> so when I call your name, if you could come up, and there's some people who aren't going to be here today, so my apologies that it, as well. Come up on the left side, because Levi and Traps are going to be taking pictures over here on the right, OK? So first start off is our Explore teaching certificate, and this is for graduate students. We have graduate students all across the college and university who are teaching our undergrads and who have the right to get that professional development. So we have a specific 
certificate available to them that takes a little bit less time so they could earn their master's, but so that they can get their feet wet and learn about teaching. So we had six people overall earn their certificate, Bailey Crowley, Mallory Hagathorn, Karina Kleminski, Meng Yu, and they're not available to attend today. We also have Madison Hyder. <laughs> and Rachel Mano. Rachel Mano also is a graduate student, not only earned the Explore College Teaching Certificate, but she also earned the Teaching Scholar Certificate, which is a whole nother 10 badges she has to earn and contribute back to the teaching and learning community. So congratulations, Rachel. Okay, our Teaching Scholar Certificate. So that is the primary certificate for our faculty here at the university that takes six engaged badges of participating in an event, three implements, including creating a teaching statement, teaching philosophy, and one contribute of giving back to the teaching and learn community in some way. And we have over 15 people who've earned that this year, the ones who were not able to attend. Uh, Amanda, Amanda Dilliman, she's sick, along with Antia Gruel, but the ones that we do have here today are Lauren Hunt, <laughs> Timothy Chinette, <laughs> Colleen Jones, <laughs> maybe not, Melanie Chambers, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Warnick. Oh, Safida Ray, That's it. Sharon Lyman, <laughs> Teresa Green, <laughs> Missy Kofid, <laughs> Rachel Robinson Green. Alexander Romney, and Sarah Gordon, and Abby Benninghoff. Okay. We also have Irina McLaughlin. She does. I wasn't sure if she was coming today. Okay. Abby and Sarah both earned their master teacher this year along with their teaching scholar. So the master teacher is a little bit more rigorous in the way of you have to implement more rigorously. You also have to contribute more to the teaching and learning community. So Sarah and Abby both took it upon themselves this year not to only earn the teaching scholar, but to give back to the teaching and learning community and be representatives of what good teaching looks like at the university. So great job, guys. Uh, <laughs> as did Tim Chinette, but we had an issue, so. <laughs> okay, and now we have our final certificate, which is the Master Teacher Certificate, and we have Aubrey Rogowski, okay. Sarah Tulane, Sunshine Brosy. Mr. Jason Tweed. <laughs> Jason Marshall. <laughs> Jessica Rivera Mueller. <laughs> Beth Visory. <laughs> and Doris McGonagall. Okay, so while we get through this long line of people, this is the most that we've ever had earn a certificate in a year, so we get to add those to our list of people. Um, I'm going to begin introducing our amazing keynote speaker who I've gotten to know over the last couple of days. 
Oh, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. So <laughs> come on up, Kevin. Good morning, everyone. We're sneaking in an award here. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Kevin Shanley, the Director of Online and Continuing Education. And we decided this year that we wanted to uh, introduce an exemplary online teacher award. And uh, we kind of did this over the summer. It was a last minute kind of thing we threw together. We asked departments for nominations, uh, looking for faculty that uh, excelled in online teaching with quality course design, uh, exceptional instructional strategies, uh, effective course facilitation, uh, focus on learner outcomes and inclusive and accessibility. And we received several nominations and uh, our faculty committee in partnership with City and ETE, we've selected this year's exemplary online course teacher award for, uh, to be Matthew LaPlante from Journalism and Communication. So he was not able to be here today, but we'll be sure to present this uh, either in a department or a college meeting for him, but uh, thank you for time. 